and this video I want to cover the basics of the character component that is built into the ultimate multiplayer first person shooter template plugin. So this is more along the lines of how to set up a character, kind of the basics of it. So what you should look for, what you should try to do, and just kind of very a very generalized high level overview that will hopefully clear up some questions that I get. So if we look here at the example character, uh, this is kind of the basics of what you would want to follow. So you can ignore everything in blue up here that is unrelated, that is specific to firearm customization, which again is just kind of an example layout. So starting with begin play. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is include the character component into your character. So I have an old video where I create this or set this up from scratch that is basically the same concept as now, however it's component based instead. So anyways, we'll just start from the beginning here. So first thing that you need to do is you need to call init on the character component after you've added it. So there is a first person mesh and third person mesh as well as a camera component. So basically you pass in the camera component to the character component. And here's where some people I think get a little bit confused. So you don't need to have a split mesh system. So here, as you can see, I have, whoops, a first person mesh set up right here, as well as a third person mesh set up right here. If you want to, you could do full true first person by having just a single mesh, or you can just have the separate traditional arms and third person body for, well, third person. So if you wanted to, you could pass, pass in the same mesh if you're using true first person. So you would pass in the same mesh for the first person mesh and third person mesh, and that'll take care of that. Or if you're using separate meshes, such as how I'm doing it, you would pass in the first person mesh and the third person mesh separately. After that, this you can ignore. This is just for visuals of the head following it, or of the head. So that way the head mesh follows along and animates with the torso. So after that, uh, there's not really much else to it. You basically just call all the other functions that you need. So for example, if you want to add a firearm, you call add firearm. If you want to do some other stuff that's specific to the character component, like for example, switching firearms. This function here will switch to your secondary. You can pass in a socket just for an example and all that kind of stuff. You can basically do kind of whatever you need to through. Just look through the list of functions and the way you do that, drag out the character component and you can drag this out and go to the FPS template section. And here you have a lot of stuff such as get is sprinting, is using firearm collision, aiming, leaning, and a bunch of other stuff. So for example, getting the firearm, getting your magnification sensitivity, playing camera shake, switching to specific firearms, and just all this stuff. And a bunch of helpers here to get basically information that you may need, such as, or doing stuff such as ragdolling a character. So a good amount of stuff is contained in there. And as well as you have more inside of the actual static functions library as well. So if we head over here to the FPS template, here we have a bunch of, well, static functions. So constructing a firearm from a data structure that, again, is already contained for you. Uh, serializing a firearm, deserializing a firearm, basic file handling, which I don't know why I still have that under serializing. Uh, basic helps for projectiles, so spawn projectile impact effects, which takes in like the location, force, and all that kind of stuff. Some procedural stuff that's based on the character movement component. We have others, so spawning effects, spawning an empty case sound, basic math functions, and just stuff like that. So moving on to the actual settings. So this is going to be dependent on your actual skeleton. So let's bring up the skeleton here really quick, and we'll just kind of do a brief overview and compare it to how the mannequin may be set up. So the way this is set up right now for my case, I am using the parent socket for aiming, and I have my camera socket, which I named camera, and then I have my actual camera socket bone, which I named CC underscore camera. So this is a bone, this is a socket. And then I apply them both. So I have the camera socket being, again, the camera socket, and then the camera socket parent bone. In your case, one of, no, this may not be needed depending on your setup. So if we look at that really quickly, here we have the head, then we have this camera bone, which is placed right at the eyes, and then we have the camera socket. Now the camera socket is placed exactly where the actual camera bone is. Uh, if I recall correctly, the reason I placed that there, for whatever reason, when I attached my camera to this camera bone itself, 
I was getting some weird stuttering when there was none going on. So it's not frame rate related or anything like that. It was just some weird stuttering. So I went ahead and just added a socket to it. So that's the reason for this checkbox here. So when we use the chair or when we use the parent socket for aiming, what that's doing is we have our camera socket. However, we are going to actually use the camera bone or the camera socket parent bone in this case for the aiming purposes. So it's going to bring it to this bone. So in my case, because again, my camera socket and parent and the guy camera bone are in the same place, I use that. Now, if you're using the mannequin, which does not have a dedicated camera bone, instead of just, you would create a socket off the head. So I add a socket to the head and we'll just name this one camera socket. What in the world did I just press? All right, that was fancy. So we're just gonna name this one camera socket. You would then just grab camera socket. You would paste that into the camera socket. And then the camera socket parent bone would be the head. And then you would want to uncheck this checkbox here. So that way you use the camera socket for aiming. So that allows you to move the camera basically kind of wherever you would need it to or wherever you would want your camera to be placed. I'm going to undo that. How many times do I got to control Z and that's still going to be there. Okay, moving on down, we have the weapon grip socket. So in my case, I have a dedicated weapon bone on the right hand. So here's my hand underscore R and here's my firearm bone. So based upon the animation that I'm playing, such as the, that's a nice rendering. I guess that's something related to occlusion, but all right, stop flickering. That's annoying. So basically, based, uh, this is kind of be, well, this can be kind of treated like a socket. So in Blender, I animate my firearms with this bone. So I attach my firearm to this bone here. Then I have a control bone that animates this around. So I position it wherever I need to in my right hand. And basically this bone is actually what's, you know, positioned. So if you wanted to, for example, you don't have this. If you're just, again, use the normal mannequin. You can right click, add a socket to the hand. I'm just going to call this one firearm socket. And then you could position it. So I'll just add a preview asset of the bolt gun here. And all I have to do is just simply position it, you know, roughly where I would want it. So for the sake of time, we'll just say there's where I want it. And that's it. All you have to do then is just copy firearm socket and paste it into the weapon grip socket. And that's all. Everything else, again, is handled for you behind the scenes. Uh, we have sprint speed. This one's kind of optional. This is more or less for uh, the character itself because this is a C++ character at the base. Uh, the other character is a blueprint, like strictly a blueprint one. So here is the actual blueprint uh, character here. I need to remember to remove sprint speed. But that was just there kind of as a helper. So ignore that. Then we have the max look up and look down angle and then the max lean angle. So what these are, are, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. When we look up and then look down, we have our max look up and down angle. Let me revert this weapon grip socket back because that broke it. So if I change the max look up angle to something like, uh, let's do 25 we will have a lookup limit of 25 degrees. So as you can see, I can, I'm can i going up, but I'm hitting that wall in the same spot every time. That is, again, related to the max lookup. And the look down is the exact same thing. Then we have the lean angle. So that's set to 35 right now. And basically as you lean, that is what controls it. So you can, I, I think I exposed this to where you can edit on the fly. I'm going to have to double check, and if not, that'll be one thing that I add. So if I change this to something like, let's do something, I don't know, kind of ridiculous, like 80 as well. When we go to lean, as you can see, we have quite a hefty lean. So it's a little absurd. So that's what controls that. Next up, this is uh, kind of more or so of a, I guess, a preventative problem. So upon spawning, or when you first load up a client, this is basically due to initialization and attachment. So basically this will retry to attach your firearm to the hand as a client. So if you load in and 
based upon the server replicating your firearm down to you. So if we look at begin play here, uh, add firearm will only actually fire on the server. So we're adding the M4. When we play as the client, the client may have stuff loaded up after. So we may have a variable be replicated down to the client, such as the firearm, that the client doesn't know what to deal with. So the attaching is done purely on the client. So I've removed the actual default functionality for attachment replication on the firearms, and that is actually now handled basically on the client. So it's client side. That allows you to easily switch between first and third person based upon which one you want to attach to without the server having influence over it. So for example, if the current firearm variable replicates too early, well, then the firearm won't be attached to the client's hands. So this is what this is aided or set up to help in. So by default, this will attempt to reattach the firearm. So this will do it five times to, in total every 0.05 seconds. So this is just to kind of more or less help you guarantee that the firearm will be attached if you're stuck in this kind of situation. So it's more so there just kind of as a preventative problem, so to speak. I guess that's one way you can kind of look at it. It just kind of aids in fixing a, well, just an issue. So that pretty much sums up the character component and the basics of setup. So again, it's relatively straightforward. I'll do a quick rundown one more time. You add the FPS template character component to your character. You must make sure you call init, so you pass in your camera, and then your first and third person mesh, or both of the same mesh to first and third person, depending on if you're doing true first person. Then you want to configure your camera socket, and that basically if you have a camera bone, or like I explained earlier, that'll dictate whether or not you want to have this checked. You want to make sure you set up your weapon grip socket, and then you can configure all these however you wish. But by default, you should be fine to leave them uh, at their default values. So that basically sums up everything I think about the character component. So as always, this plugin will be linked at the top of the description if you're interested. And if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord and I'll be happy to help you. So I'll see you in the next video.